All right, the first thing that we're going to do today is learn about how to use these sound pads on the Rodecaster Pro. You see these pads right over here on the side? There are eight triggerable buttons right here where you can play a sound of your choosing. I'm gonna do one right now. Any sound effect you can think of. So you can play a theme song, you can play a sound effect, you can play a recording of yourself, you name it, all with triggerable pads. There are two ways to control this that I'm gonna show you today. Uh, one inside the mixer where you can program it. You hit the gear cog up in the top and you click sounds if you wanna access the menu. Also, you can just straight up from the main menu here, click the music icon on the main menu and it'll take you right here to where you can control the sounds. Now here's a little known feature when it comes to using the sound pad. So as you can see, all of the buttons are programmed right here and you can click one to edit it but there's actually two banks of buttons. You can go forward and there's a second bank of buttons that you can use with this mixer. So you have a total of 16 sound triggers that you can use at any point. It's not just eight, it's 16 sound triggers, which I, in my opinion makes it way more valuable uh, by having all of those sound triggers, little known feature there, okay? So let's go ahead and manipulate one of the sounds and I'll teach you how to input and change and manipulate an individual sound. Cool? Cool. So let's go ahead and click the applause button. That was this one right here. Cool. And so with that, you can do a number of settings here inside of the app that allow you to change the settings of it. So number one, you can change the color of the button itself. As you can see right here, it is yellow. So if we want to, we can change it to red. We can change it to blue, purpley, greeny, whatever you want it to be. I'm gonna leave it at yellowy because it's different than the other ones, all right? So then there are a number of different playback modes that you can use here. So there's latch, pause, replay, and play. Let me show you how their behavior is different. So with latch mode, watch what happens when we hit it. As you can see, it plays the sound back, and then, of course, when we hit the button again, it turns the sound off. And if we played another sound, <laughs> it'll allow both sounds to play at the same time, okay? That's how the latch button works. When we go to pause, we hit the button, and it pauses in the middle of the sound playing, then it finishes playing the sound. So, do you see the difference there? So the difference between those two modes is that latch mode will play the sound from the beginning when you press the button and turn it off from the beginning when you press the button. It restarts the sound, whereas pause mode will obviously play pause in the middle of playing the sound. Depends on what you want to do with your sounds, but there's two different options for you. The next one is called replay mode. Watch what happens with the behavior of replay mode. Notice how every single time you hit the button, it restarts the sound over and over and over again as soon as you hit it, okay? So that's yet another mode that differs from the other two. And then the last mode here is just regular play mode. And notice how on regular play mode, when I hit the button over and over and over again, it doesn't replay it, it only plays it once. So no matter how many times I hit it in a row, it will only play the sound once. So if you want a mode where you, where you basically are not going to accidentally press a button and play your theme song twice or something like that, and you know for sure that that button only needs to be played once, that that sound only needs to be played once, that is going to be the perfect mode for you. Awesome. Those are all the play modes, but there's a bonus option here. So this allows you to play the sound and it ends at the end of the sound with the arrow running into the line, right? It plays until it stops but you can loop a sound as well. So check this out. I'm gonna go into loop mode and loop mode works with all of these and I'm gonna hit the applause button and it should just continue to do applause. There it is over and over and over again. The sound never stops, cool? So that's how that works. And then it doesn't stop because it's in loop mode. And so you turn it off and then, then it stops. So you notice how if it's in loop mode and you're playing it, it'll play over and over and over again in a loop. It'll trigger whichever function you have right here over and over and over again in a loop. So that's how you loop a sound. But wait, there's more. So one thing that is really important that a lot of folks miss when they're checking out sound triggers, 
Obviously you have the triggers over here, but there's a monitor button here. So if you want to hear the sounds, you hit the green button so you can hear it in your headphones. Some people don't want to hear the sounds. Some people don't want to hear the music playback. Some people don't want to hear those items. You can choose whether it plays back in your headphones or not by hitting the green ear button, the monitor button on the mixer itself. Okay, so I prefer to hear the sounds because that allows me to use this volume meter right here, this slider next to the sounds to adjust the sound accordingly so I can hear the way it sounds in the final mix that everyone is listening to. So that's how you adjust the volume and you choose whether the sounds are playing in your headphones or not right here. So if you can't hear the sounds, for example, when you press the button in your headphones, that's because you need to hit the ear button and then it'll play back in your headphones. Got it? That is a troubleshooting item that many of my digital clients have come to me with. They're like, my sounds are broken, AWOL. You've got to hit the ear button so that you can monitor the sounds if you actually want to monitor them. But wait, there's more. So with the sounds, there's many, many, many more options that you can do. Check it out. You can get rid of a sound if you want to by hitting the clear button right here. And you can just get rid of whatever sound is in there. And it'll clear that particular pad. Go ahead and hit the confirmation. And then boom, there's now no sound built in to that pad. Okay? Then here's the really neat part. You can record a sound clip directly from your mixer. So this could be something that comes in through a USB port, through a external input, through a Bluetooth, through one of your microphones, and you can record a sound and it becomes a playback sound for that particular pad. So let's learn how to record a sound using the Rodecaster Pro, a custom sound. And then this way you can do catchphrases, you can make sounds, you can do whatever you want, and you can have those playback in real time, anytime you want, even during a show, you can capture somebody saying something and then play it back to them later. Pretty neat, right? Check this out. So what you're gonna do is we've already selected that particular sound here in the sound pad. So let's just review how we got here. We hit the music button in the main menu. Then we go to the pad that we're looking to program. Then we click the record button. And then once we get here, we're going to hit, obviously, the record button here, and it's going to record everything that's coming through the mixer at that time. All right, so I'm going to do just a quick recording here, and you guys are going to see how it works. Hi, my name is Andrew Wall, otherwise known as AWOL Digital. I'm a digital consultant that helps people make better technology decisions and grow their internet business more effectively. Thank you so much for watching. Then we hit the stop button to stop the recording. Now, as you can see, there's a timeline here and we can drag our finger across the timeline to different parts of the recording that we want to monitor. Then we can hit the playback button and it'll play it back for us. So let's go ahead and do that. Hi, my name is Andrew Wall, otherwise known as AWOL Digital. I'm a digital consultant that helps people make better technology decisions and grow their internet business more effectively. Thank you so much for watching. Awesome. So if I wanted to use that as my sound for that sound trigger, I could then just use it and it would just apply. I would go back and then I would apply it. But wait, there's more. So if you want to overdub another sound on top of that sound, then what you can do is you can hit record again, enable overdub or hit record again, and it will dub another sound on top of that one to make a multi-layered recording for that sound. Really neat, right? So let's do it. Boop -a -doop Hi, my name is Andrew Boop -a -doop Wall, doop otherwise known as AWOL Digital. Be -doop be -doop I'm a digital consultant that helps people make better technology decisions and grow their internet. So as you can hear, I dubbed over, and I'm going to hit save. And so I dubbed over me going doopy doop doop on top of the uh, original recording. And then let's play, let's play the whole thing back and see if it recorded both layers. Boop -a -doop Hi, my name is Andrew Boop -a -doop Wall, otherwise known as AWOL Digital. -a -doop I'm a digital consultant. I'm not going to make you listen to that whole thing, but you guys get the point. So now that button on our pad right here is in a dub of two sounds on top of each other at the same time. So you can create any number of dynamic sounds custom inside the mixer. That's how you make a custom sound from your own recording. 
This can be from a DJ mix. This can be from a microphone. This can be from anything at all that you could ever imagine. The sky is the limit with your creativity, and you can choose what it is that you want that custom sound to be. Pretty neat, right? Cool.